Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be roasting a turkey in the oven. I find this method easy when I'm going to roast it in the oven or not use a bag. And here's how I do it. To start, I'm going to make a dry seasoning rub. You can season and spice your turkey the way you like. Today, I'm going to use one tablespoon of seasonal seasoning salt. You could just use plain salt. I'm also adding two teaspoons of dried thyme, two teaspoons of dried rosemary, two teaspoons of lemon pepper, two teaspoons of garlic powder, and I'm going to use two teaspoons of onion powder. Now, if I had some dried sage, I'd also add that into the mix, but I only have fresh, so I'm gonna add that to my butter. So I'm giving this a good mix, combine it, and I'm going to set it aside. By the way, this amount of seasoning is good for a 10 to 12 pound turkey. Now, as I stated earlier, I didn't have any dried sage to add to my rub, so I'm going to add the fresh sage that I have to the butter. Here I have around a tablespoon of chopped sage that I'm going to add to one stick of softened butter. Once that's combined, I'm going to set it aside until I need it. Okay, so here is my 10 pound turkey. This turkey already comes pre-brined or injected with an 8% salt spice solution. So if you want to brine your turkey or dry brine it for the course of several days, you can do that, but I don't find it necessary with your typical grocery store turkeys. I also want to mention, if you are the type of person that has to rinse or wash your meat, then do so. I can't control what you do in your home, but it is advised not to do that as you can cause contamination to your work area. Okay, so do what you will. I've patted my turkey dry and I've tucked the wings under. The legs came trussed through the extra skin, so I don't have to worry about that. There is no plastic piece to remove, but if there is one on your turkey, remove it and just truss the legs. So now I'm ready to season and prepare the turkey. So I've removed and separated the skin from the meat that's right there. And you can see when this turkey, when I pulled it out of the bag, some of the skin over the breast meat was sort of cut away. So I have extra meat that I cut away from the neck area and I'm just going to cover that exposed part of the, the turkey breast. So that might be something you need to do and here it is. I just save that from the neck piece and I'm going to cover the exposed area just so it doesn't burn as it roasts in the oven. So now I'm going to start seasoning and preparing the turkey. So I have clean hands that I'm working with. So I'm just going to take some of this dry rub. I'm going to season underneath the skin near the breast area. Then I'm going to add the butter and then the rest of the dry rub will go on the entire exterior and inside the cavity of the turkey. I'm actually preparing my turkey the night before, but you could actually do this the day of. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this days before. I just think it's convenient to prepare it the night before. Leave it uncovered in the refrigerator to let the skin sort of dry out because it does give you a crispier skin when you oven roast it that way. But it definitely is up to you because I do understand when you are cooking your holiday meal, sometimes all these things just pile up on you and you just gotta make do with the time that you have. So definitely do what works for you. So once I'm done seasoning and preparing my turkey, I'm doing this the night before, so I'm going to let it set in my refrigerator overnight, uncovered, just to dry out the skin a bit. And if you feel weird leaving your turkey in the fridge uncovered, then just tent it loosely with aluminum foil. Okay, so by the next morning, I am ready to bake my turkey. So I am going to stuff the cavity with a little bit of onion, a small carrot, one celery stalk or stick, and some dried thyme and rosemary. And you don't have to add that. You can add anything you want to the cavity, but I do suggest loosely packing it. Don't pack it so tightly that the airflow or the heat can't get through the middle of the turkey. Okay. 
So here I have a 16 by 13 roasting pan with a rack and this is typically how I would cook my turkey when I roast or bake it. And I add two cups of chicken broth at the bottom. Basically I do that so that any drippings don't burn. But I realized after placing my turkey and looking over the instructions, it suggests to use a flat roasting rack. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a baking sheet lined with just a flat rack and try it this way. Honestly, I typically like to use a bag to cook my turkey in because it just allows me more time to do sides or get things other than the turkey prepared when I'm cooking a holiday meal. So my turkey is prepped. It's on a flat rack in a baking sheet. I did add the two cups of broth to the bottom. So now into the oven it goes. I'm going to be baking this in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, but I want to show you the instructions that came with this turkey. You might find this useful when you're making your own turkey if you lose the instructions or you just need a reference. So for this turkey, it has some thawing instructions. It has roasting instructions. It gives you temperatures if you're checking the thigh or the breast of the turkey. It gives you good suggestions on how to cook your turkey. So I'm placing this in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And for a 10 to 12 pound turkey, it suggests cooking it for around two to two and a half hours or until the breast of the turkey reads 170 degrees Fahrenheit on your thermometer. Now, if you want to follow the 165 degree temperature, that also works, but I'm just going to follow the instructions that come with the turkey. So my turkey is in the oven and I will be testing the temperature right at two hours. I don't want to overcook it either. Right at an hour and a half into the cook time, I wanted to tent loosely the breast because I did see that it was getting darker. And you might also, depending on your oven, have to turn the pan around just to get even browning on the turkey. Sometimes the back of the oven gets a bit more hot than the front. So that's something that you might want to do. And I'm not going to baste this turkey at all. You can definitely baste your turkey, but I'm trying to do the least amount of work possible. So after two hours and 20 minutes, my turkey thermometer read 170 in the breast, so I removed it. And you can see all that concentrated flavor at the bottom of the pan. I will be making a gravy with that. But you'll want to let your turkey rest for at least 30 minutes before cutting it. Okay, so my turkey has rested for 30 minutes, so now I'm going to start breaking it down. I'm going to take away that extra skin that was holding the legs together. And my approach to slicing and cutting a turkey is the same way I cut a chicken. I get handsy with it. You find the joint and cut at the joint to break down your turkey. And you know, you're gonna slice it the way you like it. I remember growing up, my aunts would just use clean hands and start ripping away the meat from the bone. So do what you like. So once I've sliced my turkey, I'm going to serve it on a platter and I don't cut it all. For example, one breast I'll leave whole. You know, I'll cut it as we eat it just to keep it nice, tender, and moist. So here is the turkey leg for my husband because he likes the turkey leg. But I'm gonna show you what I did with the pan drippings. So here I just have this little fat separator cup. I'm going to pour in all the fond and drippings into this cup. And if there's like fond stuck to the pan, use that as well. So I've separated the juice and drippings away from the fat. You can start your gravy with a roux, but I'm going to use cornstarch and some extra low sodium chicken broth. And the cornstarch slurry is basically equal parts cornstarch to water. I basically use two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch to two and a half tablespoons of water. Okay, so my pan juices yielded a half cup of juices, so I've added a cup and a half extra of low sodium chicken broth. I brought that up to a rolling simmer gentle boil. Now I'm going to add my cornstarch slurry. Again, you can start your gravy with a roux, but I find this so much easier. So it's going to thicken right away. And once it's thickened, you have a delicious turkey gravy. You can add salt or seasoning if you need to, but this turkey gravy with the drippings is salted enough and it's so good. Okay. so. 
turkey and gravy is done. And I like to think that is just one simple way to make it. I do different variations when I make turkey and I hope to share them with you. So pick your preferred preference and most of all, happy holidays you guys and enjoy your time with family and friends.